amazing. So I want to take you guys back to a fun, exciting time in my life. This was a time where I felt invincible. I felt that I could get whatever I wanted, whatever my heart desired. I was the sweet age of 18. It was the fast life, driving around in the car with my friends, going to parties, the shopping, the boys, the fake IDs, the drinking, the hangovers, the drugs, jail. And I thought it was so cool. Jail was so badass. Just like in the movies, the floor, it was gray cement floor. The, there was rusty silver bars. And it was a chilly 60 degrees inside. I thought it was hilarious laughing at the cops, laughing in their faces, talking back to them, knowing that I was going to be let out in just a few hours. I thought to myself, oh yeah, I am such a rule breaker, a risk taker, a troublemaker. Too bad they took away my cell phone or I probably would have taken so many selfies. I knew that my friends were going to think I was such a gangster when I got out. And you know what? They did. And that only fueled my sense of invincibility even more. A night in jail, big deal. If I could handle that, I can handle anything. Cross that off the bucket list. But then, I soon found myself in jail again. Only this time, it was big girl jail. This time, they made me take out all my piercings, and I had a lot of them. This time, I literally had to shower in front of 20 strangers. The orange pants and the orange shirt, they were not cute. And do not get me started on the communal underwear. When I went upstairs and I met my new roommates, it was not fun. It was not cool. But you know what? I actually felt safe in there. I wasn't scared in there. I was scared of what was going to happen when I got out. Because when I got out, I would be back in the real world. I would have my freedom back to make choices for myself. And I was building up quite the track record of not making great choices. The bad choices were so easy to make. I didn't know if I could make good choices. Lovely story, huh? So how did I go from troubled teen to an internet marketing entrepreneur coaching others to success? What changes did I make in my life? And what changes can you make in your life? Well, when I was 21, working my way through college, I had a fun part-time job, a J-O-B, that is just over broke, and it was at a clothing store in the mall. And I was the top salesperson. So I asked to get my 50 cent raise a little early. And they said no. Rude. I decided I was going to find a new job that actually appreciated me. So I applied for some more JOBs and I got hired at an insurance agency. I thought, hell yes, I am going to be such a hot businesswoman with my own cubicle, my own swivel chair and stapler. <laughs> So it was my first day at work and I felt so good in my nice outfit, sitting at my desk, shuffling some papers around, pretending to work, and I got a call from the manager. Rachel, we just got your background check. We didn't know that you were a criminal. You need to pack up your stuff immediately. Oh, uh, what? I am a criminal because of my past? What about all the good choices that I started to make? I was in shock. I could not believe that I was fired one hour into my new job after weeks of successful training. But then, I remember the story of Oprah, who was abused as a child, homeless as a teenager, and she was told that she would never make it on TV. Oprah, of all people. 
She did not let her past define her, so I was not going to let my past define me. And you can't let your past define you. If I let my past define me, the most I could hope for is maybe working at that clothing store again. If I let my past define me, I probably would have stolen that stapler, but I wasn't that kind of person anymore. So because I did not quit and I kept going, I did eventually find a new job at a marketing firm. So that's what I studied and I was so excited. I developed my skills. I learned so much about how to run that type of business, but it was still a J-O-B type of situation. I knew that I could have a much bigger impact on the world and make a lot more money if I became an entrepreneur. So I decided to quit and start to build my own business. But notice how I said I decided to do it. I didn't just choose to do it, I decided to do it. A decision is a choice that you commit to. And committing means that there is no going back, there is no plan B. But the thing about plan A is that it does not always, barely ever go exactly to plan. I had my plan on how I would get clients, how I would get the work done, how I would make money and build the business, and let's just say it did not go exactly to plan, but it is still plan A. Plan A of being a successful entrepreneur. It's just a working, living document, always changing and always improving. Earlier last year, I decided to move 700 miles to LA. I didn't just choose it, I decided, I decided it and I did it. I was ready for the next chapter of my life. I got rid of everything in my home, put the necessities in my car, mostly shoes, and I drove down here. I didn't want to be tied down to my stuff, I wanted to be open to new experiences and new relationships. And the past six months have been better than I could have ever imagined. I have networked with thousands of new people, I've made so many new friends, I've really learned even more so how to better evaluate people and who to allow in my inner circle. I've gone to dozens of networking events and conferences and seminars and workshops and I've even created my own private mastermind group and I throw my own events now too. So you really need to guard your time and guard your mind like it's the most valuable thing that you have. Because it is the most valuable thing that you have. And you get to choose who you spend your time with, what you spend your time on, and what goes into your brain. So take stock of those things. Are the choices you're making, are they empowering you or disempowering you? Are they moving you forward or backward? People, they often ask me, Rachel, what was that one pivotal moment that changed everything for you? Well, the second time in jail, it was not the pivotal moment. Getting fired from my job, it was not the pivotal moment. Learning that all of my old so-called friends were dying because of drug overdoses and drunk driving and violence, that was not the pivotal moment. There was no one pivotal moment. Every moment is a pivotal moment. Every moment is an opportunity to choose a new path. But you have to commit to it. I don't think that we ever achieve success. I think that we be success, that we are success. When our actions are aligned with our mission and our purpose, we are being successful. So I found that this came to me so much more, so much more success came to me when I started aligning my actions with my mission. But first you need to find clarity on what that is. And what really helps is to be authentic. The more authentic you are, the more you will see success in your life. As professionals here, we try so hard to be professional, to put on the facade of what we think others want. Well, it's just, it's so much to keep up with. It's too hard. My dad over here in the audience said, Rachel, don't talk about jail in your talk. <laughs> One of my mentors said, <laughs> One of my mentors said, he said, Rachel, don't say ass in your talk. Don't say hell in your talk. Well, you know, if you don't have your true story and your true voice and your true language, 
What do you have left? You have an untrue version of yourself. You have a fake persona that you are always going to have to keep up with. And people are going to see through that. And you'll never be able to make real connections with people to serve them. Your authentic self is your best perfume. And that perfume, it's going to attract some people and it's going to repel others. And that is just perfect. Why would you want people that don't want to be around you to be around you? So, something that I discovered with my purpose and my mission is that I love to help others identify their purpose and their mission and help them become their authentic, unapologetic, badass selves. I know I still am a rule breaker, a risk taker, and a troublemaker. Only now I use it for good. It's my highest joy to help other women and people be successful, unstoppable, and empowered. Where, what rules do you not like? What walls are in your way? Can you go around the wall? No? What about go over the wall? No? What about bust through that wall? No? Okay, well then what about digging a tunnel and going under it? You need to find a way to move forward, no matter what. That's what commitment is. Where are you not taking enough risk in your life, in your business? What are you afraid of? What's the worst that can happen? Getting in the car is risky, but does that mean that we don't do it? No. So people often think, oh, well, she's successful. Oh, he's successful. But they don't see what happened behind the scenes. The path to success, it is not all rainbows and butterflies. The challenges, they are promised. And the challenges, they are important. They give us something to overcome. One of the greatest things that I've learned in success is you have to surround yourself with people that are going to support you and empower you. Tonight is the perfect night for that. We are surrounded by so many successful, unstoppable, and empowered women here tonight. But it's not a numbers game. It's about the connection you make. So I challenge each and every one of you to make one new connection tonight with one new woman. And ask them what their biggest challenge is this year. And if you can solve that challenge for them, I guarantee they will be your ally for life. And I tend to meet as many of you as I can at the after party and find out what your biggest challenge is. So tonight, whether you liked my perfume or not, I do want you to remember these things. Your past, it does not define your present or your future. At any moment, you choose your present and your future and who you want to be. But you have to commit you got to commit now. And best of all, if your intentions are good, you too can be a rule breaker, a risk taker, and a troublemaker.